got hope for the first time in decades and decades that we never ever thought we would be in the position we are now, on the verge of a real genuine left-wing uh, government. And the only thing I'd say is, on the question of austerity, the argument has been won. The country is convinced the argument is won. Even the Parliamentary Labour Party are convinced, reluctantly, that the argument is won. I'd say on the trade union position too as well, that the Parliamentary Labour Party is going to have to accept that the trade union laws have got to be uh, thrown out and real democracy. <laughs> the anti-trade union laws have done so much damage to the working class. They meant we were in zero hour contracts and so on. Absolutely appalling. But the real, real threat we have that we really got to address, Jeremy Corbyn should have an anti-war parliamentary Labour Party and he hasn't got it. He really hasn't got it. And he will have a, a real uphill battle if, if the Labour Party itself doesn't shift from the movement downward right the way up to an anti-war position. And that's the war, that's the fight every single member of the Labour Party now has got to take up to make sure that we have an anti-war movement to support an anti-war anti parliamentary Labour Party to shore up Jeremy Corbyn on this issue. I'd like your thoughts on that. It's quite simple really, the Labour MPs have to change, or the Labour MPs will have to be changed. We can't go on with a situation where the opposition is sitting in front of Jeremy Corbyn, but the enemy is sitting all around us. We can't go on with that situation. So, either the existing Labour MPs have got to genuinely recognize that, as Tony Mohan put it, the tide of history has changed, that Blair and Blairism is gone and gone forever, and that their energy has to be put into returning Corbyn as the Prime Minister of this country and the manifesto, the programme on which he's standing, or they'll have to make way for other MPs who will support Corbyn and support If my judgment is right, quite a lot of them are on their way out the door. It's only a question of when, presumably our way, in synchronicity with Sky News, uh, his headlines. It's a matter, I think, of time. On the other hand, there's one today, Andrew Eagle, who's offered what's being called an olive branch. All I say is, beware of the thorns of that olive branch. Angela Eagle stabbed Corbyn in the back, lied about Brickgate, got our constituency Labour Party suspended, and continues to support the actions of the Netanyahu government in Israel. She'll take a lot of convincing. The history of all the American led wars since 1945 has been a disaster, and we've been lied to about it. I remember in 1964, the news was telling us that North Vietnamese ships had an attack an American um, battle cruiser just off North Vietnam. Twenty years later, we discovered that was a complete lie. But it was the excuse to launch a war that killed over three and a half million Vietnamese. And if you read Eisenhower's biography, because at the end of the Second World War, a host
Ho Chi Minh, a declared an independent state. His constitution had quite a lot of quite democratic things in it, lifted out the American constitution. The first thing he did was turn to America and ask for a loan and cooperation. There was no reply. And when Eisenhower came to power and the French, they, they come back in and invaded, but only eight years of conflict and they weren't going to win. A deal was done that separated Vietnam. But in his autobiography, I, Eisenhower says, we had to do that because we were all being told if we allowed a free election in Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh would win 80% of the vote. And what that led to was another race of war. And we, I could go on about all of our interventions in the Middle East. Has any of them not been a disaster? Starting in 1956, when we had a secret meeting to the British and French governments, a secret meeting with the Israeli government in a, a, a mansion on the edge of Paris. And Britain and France asked Israel to invade Egypt, which would give us the excuse then to invade, to stop the war between Israel and Egypt and seize back the Suez Canal. Now, it took about another 30 years before we discovered the truth. I, all of this has been done. These wars have never been about defending a democracy or removing some ghastly dictator. They've been about defending America's commercial interests, whether it's in Latin America, the Middle East, or whatever. And I can't think that we're ever going to see Jeremy Corbyn wandering up to the White House and saying, mm, we'll just do what you want. And that's why they will do everything to keep him yeah. out. I remember <laughs> changed the voting laws so vast numbers of poor black people were kept off the voting list. I, and one of uh, uh, Tony Blair's key addicts who I met at City Hall said, because at that stage almost every West European government was ignoring Bush. They saw him as an embarrassment and they were bloody right. And Blair's aide said, he's going to try to meet Bush because we're the only European country that will really work with him and he will give us such influence. If there was any bloody influence at all, we ended up being dragged into I, two horrific wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. And the legacy has been a disaster, and we were lied to. We were told Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. And it's not just that. We're told we had to have sanctions on Iran because they were trying to create nuclear weapons. <coughs> but have you ever heard anyone in a British or American government say, we need to have sanctions against Israel because they put nuclear weapons in Donald Trump is famously afraid of stairs. That's why Theresa May held his hand down the stairs to the Rose Garden. No. Jeremy Corbyn will push him down the stairs if he goes to the Rose Garden. Let's go to the...